Today, I want to talk a little bit about character factions. This is something I've used in my game over the many years and decades, and is actually kind of wired into the game. The 2014 Dungeon Master's Guide, for example, has a whole section on character factions and renown and growing your reputation and growing with, with all of that. I had big factions in my Eberron game. Eberron is a really big setting that has a big focus on these factions and you can kind of choose these factions. So I did that too. So what I'm talking about today isn't something that's completely brand new or completely revolutionary, but where it really would have mattered and had I, I wish I had done this sooner was in my Shadow Dark RPG where I really found that if I had tied the characters to factions, the game would have overall gone smoother. And today we're going to talk about how you can use factions to better tie the characters to the world of your game. So this is an article that is going to come out sometime in Sly Flourish, but I wanted to talk about it here on the show as well. And one of the, where it really kind of came up for me is in the Shadow Dark RPG. And the reason why is that characters in Shadow Dark RPG, in, in the Shadow Dark, have a tendency of dying and they die a lot. And what can happen is if your quests are tied to specifically to the backgrounds of the characters and the characters die, the player's connection with the quest in the world severs as well. That as long as that character's around doing what they're doing, you have this connection between the player, the character, the quest, and the, and the, and the goals in the world. But if the character dies, all of those threads get broken. But factions are a way to help with that. And that's because you can have the players tied to the faction instead of the players just tied to the character. As your player is tied to the character and their quests and the quests are coming from the faction, if the character dies, they still have the same quests. So an example would be in my Shadow Dark RPG, for example, let's say all of the characters decided that they were connected to Titania, the fairy queen. And she had this goal of, I need you to go out to these old dungeons and pick out magic items and bring them back to me so we can get them out of this world before this world is destroyed. It's a very dark storyline, but let's say the characters pick that faction and that's what they did. Now, even if the character dies and the new character comes out, if the new character is still tied to Titania, they still have the same quest. The quests are abstracted from the characters. That can work really, really well. Where it can also work well is if you have players who want to switch characters. So I did this in my Dark Sun game. In my Dark Sun game, we had one core faction that was like an adventurer's guild built from former gladiators in the world of Athos, right? In the, in the, in the, in the main city in Athos. I, I can't remember the name of the city. He is going to yell at me, but I can't remember the name of the city. Tyr? Tyr, I think it was called. So they were all from the town, the, the city of Tyr. They were all belonged to this Adventurer's Guild. And the nice thing was they would get quests from the Adventurer's Guild, but the players could decide which characters they wanted to sort of check out to, to go do the quest. And that way, it, they could switch characters whenever they wanted to, and they all knew that they were still on the same quest. So when you have a faction like this, and when the faction is generating the quests that the players are interested in, the, it, it is now abstracted from the characters. So they can continually be switching out which characters are involved. But even if you're not switching your characters out, even if the players are playing the same characters and they like it, it's still a really convenient hub to have one major faction that all the characters are tied to that is the one generating all of the quests and the motivation for what they're doing. Now, there's a couple of other ways that you can do this. You can, of course, have multiple factions and then have the characters tied to those multiple factions. The Adventurers League for Forgotten Realms actually did this in the early days, where when you generated your character, you tied it to one of the five major factions of the Forgotten Realms, like the Harpers or the Emerald Enclave or uh, any of the other factions that they had, the Zinterim, uh, Order, of the, Order of the Gauntlet, and Lord's Alliance. Hey, look, I can remember all five factions. So, you would have the characters tied to those individual factions. The problem was when you got a group together and the group were tied to different factions, then they all sort of had competing goals that maybe lined up, but not necessarily. So the Zinterim might have a different approach for dealing with an NPC than somebody from the Harpers would. Then there's also this question of why would Harpers and Zinterim be hanging out together anyway? So there's always these kind of like little bits of friction point when you have characters with different factions. The same I found was true with 13th Age, which sort of has factions built into the game that you play. You have the icons, the 13 icons. And in 13th Age, you actually determine what your relationship is with multiple factions, independent of the other characters. What I found when I ran 13th Age, it was, it was far better for me to narrow down that list of factions into basically three good ones and three bad ones. 
And that way you would have negative relationships with the bad ones and you'd have positive relationships, positive or neutral ones with the good ones. And then the players tended to collide on the same icons, which meant it was easier for me to steer the direction of the game, knowing that most of the people were tied to the emperor and most of them were fighting the three. It really worked out well. So I would actually recommend narrowing your factions down and even ideally having the players decide on one faction that they all belong to during the session zero of your game. Now, the neat thing here is that sounds like railroading. Oh, Mike, you're railroading the characters by saying they all have to belong to one faction. A little, but better is, hey, guys, here are four different factions you can choose from. So here's the game that we're going to play. Here's the theme of the game that we're going to play. And here are four factions that are that are different. And you could even tie the factions to different alignments. And actually, if you look at like how Eberron builds their noble houses and stuff like that, that they're kind of like this. They have sort of different alignments. So you could have your lawful good faction, your lawful neutral, or you could have your lawful good faction, your chaotic good faction, your lawful neutral faction, and your chaotic neutral fashion, faction. And sort of bring them out there so they have different different ways that they're approaching the world. Each of these factions have a different way that they do it. I would probably, unless you really want to have an evil campaign, and I'm not real big on evil campaigns. I know there are definitely people that love them and God bless, but I prefer to have ones that deal generally with good and neutral factions. So that's way that you can have four factions that are sort of divergent from each other and have different ways that they're approaching the adventure. And then the players have the agency to say, we know what the theme of the adventure is and we know what these factions are. Let's pick the one that fits the kind of gameplay and the kind of style that we want you have your players discuss it they generally come to a consensus the people who are against it you ask them are they are they still okay with it if they're not then you go back to the consensus again until eventually all the players decide yeah it would be really cool to all join this one particular faction and then the advantage is now that they're all tied to that faction it's way easier for you to guide the direction of where the campaign is going to go and know what path that they're going to take and know what quests are going to resonate because they've all tied themselves to that one hub faction to begin with. And then, of course, if you have characters that come in and out, if you have players where they're only in and out of the game every so often, they're still tied to that same faction. So they come in with the quest pre-built. Like in Shadow Dark, if a character dies, but a new character shows up, the new character already knows all of the quests that you went on because they have the same quests. It's a really, really convenient way to have this kind of central hub to your game that ties all the characters together, ties them all to a central theme, and ensures that even if the characters are moving in and out, the players still have the quests that they're going on. So I think that knowing how to use character factions, and again, you can read about them in the 2014 DMG. These are not totally unique ideas. They were wired into adventure. Adventurers League for many years, Eberron is built on them. Many, many different RPGs have these kind of factions built into them with this purpose. But I think it's a, a really powerful way of tying your players to the game that they're playing in. 